Chapter 8 My first thought was that it was one of your tricks, Ricky, Della said, jabbing his flappy chest with her index finger. Ricky backed away, looking terribly hurt. Della, give me a break. I wouldn't pull anything that stupid. You mean as stupid as hiding the canoes? Suki chimed in. They were sitting tensely around Della's living room. Everyone from the overnight except for Pete, who'd be late because his family always ate dinner late. It was Tuesday night, two nights after Della had found a skull and note tucked into her door. Her mother was playing bridge at the garrisons up the street. Although they really didn't want to get together, especially so soon after the overnight, the six members of the Outdoors Club realized they had no choice. They couldn't just ignore the envelope. They had to try to figure out who had put it there and why. Are you sure you didn't do this? Suki accused Ricky, glaring at him with obvious dislike. Caught Ricky some slack, Gary broke in. He isn't totally insensitive, you know. Yes, I am, Ricky said, grinning at Gary. But I didn't grab the skull off the dead guy's neck and leave it for Della. Look, Gary said, standing up and reaching into his jeans pocket. I got one, too. He pulled out an identical silver skull. Gary, how? Where do you get it? Della asked. I went out for the mail after school yesterday afternoon, and it was in the mailbox, Gary said. Suki grabbed the skull out of his hand to examine it. Was there a note, too? Della asked. No, no note. This is weird, Ricky said. He's very deep, isn't he? Suki cracked. Lay off, Suki, Ricky cried heatedly. Make me, Suki muttered. She handed a skull back to Gary. Please, we've got to cool it, Gary said, looking at Suki. We can't start going at each other's throats. We've got a real problem here. Whoever dropped off these skulls knows where we live. The room grew silent. Della shuddered, thinking about someone standing on her front porch, opening the screen door and tucking in the envelope. Someone standing right outside her front door. Someone who saw them that night in the ravine. Someone who watched them cover the man's body with leaves. And then, and then this someone, this witness to their crime, did what? Uncover the body? Pull the silver skulls off the chain? Deliver them to Della and Gary? For what reason? Did anybody else get anything? Ricky asked. I didn't. I didn't either, Suki said. Maya shook her head no, sitting in an overstuffed armchair in a corner, with her legs tucked tightly beneath her and a frown frozen on her face. She hadn't said a word the entire time. Where's Pete? Suki asked. He'll be here soon, Della said, but he told me this afternoon he didn't get anything. Why just us two? Gary wondered. He got up from where he was sitting beside Suki on a leather couch and walked to the living room window. Why just us two? He stopped suddenly and turned around. Hey, I just thought of something. I lost my wallet. Did anybody else lose a wallet? I did, Della answered, raising her hand as if she were in school. No one else said anything. It was in my backpack, I'm sure of it, Della said, walking over to Gary at the window. Mine too, he said. Maybe that explains how the guy got our addresses. Della suddenly remembered the noises she heard from the tent late at night, the footsteps she'd followed. Maybe they weren't caused by a raccoon after all. Maybe someone had been there, just a few feet from where she had slept. Maybe this someone had gone through the backpacks and stolen the two wallets. Della looked out into the dark front yard. He could be out there right now, she thought. She walked quickly to the side of the window and pulled the curtains shut. We've got to go to the police, Gary said suddenly. No, Maya cried, her first word of the night. You can't. I mean, we can't. But, Maya, Gary started. We've all got too much to lose. Our parents will never trust us again, Maya shouted, tensely gripping the side of the armchair. Everyone in town will know that. But this guy knows where we live, Gary shouted back at her. He tossed a silver skull high in the air. It hit the ceiling and dropped to the beige carpet at Maya's feet. Gary, cool your jets, Suki said. She patted the couch cushion beside her. Come back and sit down. Let's all try to think about this calmly, okay? Gary shook his head. I'm calm, he insisted, but he came back and sat down next to Suki, leaning forward on the couch, putting his hands between his knees and loudly cracking his knuckles. Yeah, you're real calm, okay, Suki said. So, what do you think this guy with the skulls wants anyway? I don't know, Gary said, cracking the knuckles of his other hand. To frighten us, I guess, Della said. But not to turn us in, Suki added. If he was going to turn us into the police, he would have done it already, right? Probably, Gary admitted. If he was going to report the body, he would have reported it, Suki continued. But that's not what he wants. He just wants to make us squirm, to frighten us. Why? Gary shrugged. 
just for kicks, right? Maybe. Well, what if we don't scare so easily, Suki suggested. What if he doesn't frighten us and we don't go running to the police? What if we just ignore his stupid skulls? He'll probably just go away. She's right, Maya cried, perhaps the first time she had ever agreed with Suki. But you're forgetting a few important things, Stella interrupted, standing behind the couch. For one thing, maybe he wants to do more than scare us. Maybe he wants to blackmail us or something. If he really saw what we did, if he really was there in the ravine watching us, he could hold it over us. He could blackmail us. Blackmail our parents. Yes, but, Suki started. Let me finish, Della insisted, hitting the arm of the couch with her open hand. Even more important, look what this guy did. He stood by and spied on us. Then he unburied the corpse. Then he robbed it. He stole the dead man's necklace. This guy is a creep. Some kind of weirdo. He could do anything. We could all be in danger. But if he really wanted to hurt us, to do something awful, he already had his chance, Suki argued. But all he's doing is leaving little skulls around. I don't think that's enough to. She was interrupted by a loud knock on the front door. That must be Pete, Della said, hurrying across the room. Hi, she said, pulling open the door. But no one was there. Hey! Surprised, she opened the screen door and stepped out. She didn't see anyone. She came back inside, pushing the door closed and locking it. Am I hearing things? she asked. You all heard a knock, didn't you? Maybe it's him. Maybe he's come back, Maya said, looking very frightened. Are all the doors locked? I think so, Della said. I'll go check. She ran to the kitchen to make sure the back door was locked. It was. Then she checked the sliding glass doors in the den. They weren't locked. She struggled to pull down the lock. This door was always difficult, but she managed it. She looked out through the glass into the dark backyard. A pale sliver of a moon was just climbing over the red garage roof. She pressed her forehead against the cool glass. What was that shadow moving across the lawn? Had she imagined it? No. She pulled back from the window and pressed herself against the wall. Carefully, she moved her head forward just enough so that she could see out. It was just a cat. She took a deep breath and let it out slowly. Her heart was pounding. Her hands suddenly felt ice cold. That was stupid, she thought, frightening myself over a cat. She realized the others must be wondering where she was all this time. Checking the back door lock one more time just to be sure, she headed down the hall. She was nearly to the living room when she heard the loud knocking on the front door again. Chapter 9 Who's there? Della called. No reply. Gary joined her in the hallway. Who is it? He shouted. Silence on the other side of the door. Impulsively, Gary turned the lock and started to pull the knob. No, Gary, don't, Della cried, but she was too late. He had already pulled open the door. There was no one on the front porch. Gary pushed open the screen door and stepped outside. Down on the street, a car with only one headlight squealed around the corner and sped past, going much faster than the 35-mile-per-hour speed limit. As it passed under a streetlight, Della could see that it was packed with teenagers. That's what we should be doing, she thought wistfully, out cruising around, having a good time. Gary, please. Come back in, Della called, watching him through the screen door as he explored the front yard. No one out here, he said, sounding relieved. He stepped back onto the porch. The ground is soft, but I don't see any footprints. He scratched his head of wavy blonde hair. Maybe it's a ghost, Della joked. Someone's playing a little joke, Gary said, re-entering the house and walking past her in the hallway. An unfunny joke. Della closed the door and carefully locked it. They walked back into the living room. Ricky, Maya, and Suki were standing tensely by the window. Is he, is he out there? Maya asked. Gary shrugged. I didn't see anyone. But who's knocking? Maya demanded, clenching her hands into tight fists at her sides. The ghost of Christmas past? Della said. No one laughed. Maybe we should go to the cops, Suki said, looking worried for the first time. She was wearing an oversized turquoise sweater that came down nearly to her knees. She wrapped her arms around herself nearly disappearing into the voluminous sweater. No, Maya insisted. We still have no reason to. It may be some neighborhood kid playing a stupid prank on us. I used to play this joke, Ricky admitted, smiling. Big surprise, Suki said sarcastically. I used to think it was pretty funny, Ricky said. He walked over to the couch and stretched out, laying his head on the soft arm cushion. Now I'm not so sure. We're sitting ducks here, Della said glumly. Look. Let's not go over the edge, Gary told her. The guy's just playing a joke. If he wanted to get in or do something really terrible, 
He had two chances when the door was open. He just wants to make us squirm. We're squirming, Ricky said. We're squirming. Let's be ready for him the next time he knocks, Gary said. What are you talking about, Gary? Della asked wirily. Gary was a great guy, and everyone liked him. But one reason why people liked him so much was that he wasn't perfect. Sometimes he did crazy, foolhardy things. Things that kids would talk about for weeks afterward. Della knew Gary really well. She had gone out with him for a long time, after all. And she knew the look on Gary's face. It was a look she wasn't happy to see. It was his daring look. It was his fixed expression of daring anyone to stop what he was about to do next. Come on, Gary. What are you thinking? Della demanded, following him across the living room. Nothing much. Don't look at me like that, Della. I'm not going to do anything crazy. I just want to get a look at this joker. Let's just go home, Maya said, joining them in the hallway. Ricky and Suki nervously followed her. But the party's just starting, Ricky explained, and then laughed as if he'd made a hilarious joke. Come on, Maya. We've got to wait for Pete, Della said. And besides, we haven't settled anything, Suki added. We haven't decided what to do about the skulls and the note. Do? What can we do? Maya whined. One thing we can do is not sit around this house and let that creep terrorize us. Gary had disappeared up the stairs. Now he returned, carrying Della's Polaroid camera in his hands. How about a group portrait? he asked, smiling. That's the only way you'll ever get this group to smile, Ricky cracked. Here's another way you can get me to smile, sure. Leave, Suki scowled. Knock it off, Suki, Gary warned. Stop picking on Ricky. Ricky's picking on me by existing, Suki muttered. Remind me to laugh at that one later, Ricky said, rolling his eyes. Come on, you two, Della pleaded. I'm going. Really, I have to go home, Maya said, pushing past them to the door. No, don't, Gary said, pulling her back. You'll chase him away before I can get his picture. That's your plan, Della cried. When he knocks, you're going to pull open the door, yell smile, and take his picture. Yeah, Gary said defensively. That's my plan. You got a better one. Yeah, forget it. What if he doesn't want his picture taken, Suki asked. What if it makes him mad, Ricky asked. Let me go home, please, Maya begged. After I flash the picture, Della, slam the door and lock it. He'll be too stunned to react quickly, Gary said. Then we'll call the police. He looked at Della. What do you think? Della rolled her eyes to the ceiling. Dumb, she said. But I can see that you're going to do it anyway. Gary smiled. Right. Please, let me go, Maya repeated. Maya, stop. We're all in this together. We have to stick together. We have to help each other, Della said. Then let's all leave, Ricky said. He quickly held up both hands. A joke, just a joke. Maya scowled and angrily walked back to the living room. You can't keep me a prisoner here, she called. You're not a prisoner, Suki said. But you can't be a deserter either. But you're all acting crazy, Maya insisted, her voice high and tense. I just want this to all be over. That's what we all want, Suki said. But running home to mommy won't do that, Maya. Shh, we've got to be ready, Gary said ignoring her and positioning the camera. The instant he knocks, Della, pull open the door. You've got to be fast, or we'll miss him. But how? Della started to say. But before she could finish her question, they all heard a loud knock at the door. Della jumped in astonishment. Time seemed to freeze. Her breath seemed to freeze. Everyone in the hallway seemed to freeze. The knock was repeated. Somehow, she got herself breathing again. Somehow, she got her brain to work, her arm to move. Somehow, she turned the lock and, with one swift motion, pulled the door wide open. Gary stepped forward and clicked the camera. The flash sent a burst of white light through the hallway and out onto the porch. Chapter 10 The flash of light revealed movement, a face, a blur of hair, dark clothes. It was a man. He disappeared as quickly as the light. He leaped off the side of the porch. Della heard him hit the bushes and keep moving. He must be around the side of the house by now, she thought. The surprise of it, the fact that some stranger really was on the porch, froze both Della and Gary. It was almost as if they had been caught by the camera and frozen on film. By the time they pushed open the screen door and peered out, there was no sign of anyone. The film, the picture, look, it's developing. Gary's hand was trembling as he held the Polaroid picture and watched the colors darken. Maya, Suki, and Ricky were standing behind them now. All of them stared in silence as the picture sharpened and filled in. Nice shot of the screen door, Ricky said, shaking his head. The screen door looked shiny and silvery in the photo. 
Beyond it was only darkness, not even the blur of the man moving off the porch. We didn't get him, Della said. Back to the drawing board, Gary muttered, disappointed. Someone suddenly stepped onto the porch. Oh no, we didn't close the door, Della thought. He circled the house and come back. She grabbed the door and started to slam it. Hey, what's the big idea? The shadowy figure on the porch screamed. Pete, everyone cried, very relieved. Pete looked confused. Sorry, I'm late. Nice of you to all come to the door to greet me. I see the party's going full swing. It hasn't been much of a party, Della said with a sigh. We've had a visitor. She reached past him to lock the door. Did you see anyone out there? No, no one. Pete stared at the camera. Taking pictures? Yeah, we're starting a family album, Ricky quipped. Count me out. I don't want Shore in my family, Suki said. Maya headed back into the living room and slumped down in the armchair, looking more glum than ever. Can I go now? she groaned. Guess it isn't much of a party, Pete agreed as the rest of them trooped after her. Maya made a face. I'm leaving, she said, but she made no attempt to get up from the chair. Wait, Maya, Pete said. I brought something. I think you'll want to see it. He pulled a folded-up newspaper clipping out of the pocket of his chinos and spread it out on the coffee table. Everyone gathered around to look at it. It was from the Shadyside Beacon. The headline read, Neighbors Witness Burglary, Fatal Shooting. A smaller headline underneath read, Police Hunt, Two Men in Killing. Read it out loud, Suki said to Pete. That's because she can't read, Ricky cracked. Suki gave him a hard poke in the stomach with her elbow. You read it, Della, Pete said, handing the clipping to her. I still have a big flashing light in my eyes. The news story reported that neighbors had seen two young men break into a local gardener's home. There were gunshots, the witnesses said. Then the two men ran out of the house empty-handed. The gardener was found shot dead inside his home. Rumored to be an eccentric millionaire, he had supposedly hidden a fortune in cash in his small cottage, the goal of the intruders, police guessed. When the burglars didn't find the money, the police continued, they must have attacked the gardener and killed him. The two men were still at large, the article concluded, and finding them was the number one priority of the police. A neighbor had gotten a good look as they fled. The police sketch of the burglar was beside the article. Oh no, look at the face, Della cried holding the clipping up so everyone could see it. It was the man on Fear Island, the man she had buried in the ravine. So he was a killer, Suki said, taking the clipping, staring at the sketch as if memorizing it, then passing it back to Della. So we don't have to feel so bad. He said something to me about an old man, Della said, suddenly remembering. He started talking really fast, really crazy, and he said something about not being able to communicate with an old man, having to teach him a lesson or something. It didn't make any sense at the time. I was so frightened, I really couldn't hear what he was saying. Well, now we know who he is, Pete said, folding up the clipping and shoving it back into his pocket. And we know who watched us bury him in the leaves. And we know who left the silver skull for Della. It's his partner. His partner. So that was the explanation, Della thought. The young man wasn't alone in the woods. He and his partner must have been hiding out there. Who would think of looking for them on that uninhabited island? And the partner had been hiding in the woods on the edge of the ravine. The partner saw everything. What do you think this guy wants? Maya asked softly. They had all become very quiet as they thought about the news Pete had brought. They realized their secret was not entirely secret anymore. Someone else was in on it. Someone who had murdered an old man. Someone who knew where Gary and Della lived. Someone who had been right outside the door. He obviously doesn't want to thank us, Suki said dryly. Maybe he wants revenge, Ricky suggested. Everyone looked at Ricky, as if to make sure he was serious. He was. A feeling of gloom settled over the room. No one said anything for a while. Which is worse, having him want to blackmail us or having him want revenge, Gary asked, breaking the silence. How could he blackmail us, Maya asked. Her face was red. She looked as if she were about to start crying. Not us, our parents, Pete said, looking at the floor. They didn't get anything from that robbery. The partner probably sees us as a way to cash in. Most of our parents are pretty well off, Gary said. Speak for yourself. Mine don't have a dime. Suki snapped with some bitterness. Gary ignored her. This partner could tell our parents everything. He could threaten to expose us to the police if our parents don't come up with big money. 
No, that's impossible. That's horrible, Maya cried. Well, hold it a minute, Della said, jumping up from the piano bench, where she'd been thinking about all this in silence. That doesn't make any sense at all. Nothing makes sense, Suki muttered. This partner, he can't go to the police. He killed an old man, remember? Della said. Della's right, Maya broke in, sounding a little relieved. He can't go walking into the police station and tell the cops he saw us kill his partner. The police would probably thank us anyway, Ricky said, brightening. They'd probably give us a reward or something. That's not true, Della said, shaking her head impatiently. But there's no way the partner is going to the police. He could threaten to tip off the police. It would be easy for him to just phone them and tell them what he saw, Pete said. He's right, Maya cried, horrified. So take your pick, Della said mournfully. Blackmail or revenge? We're dead meat either way, Suki said glumly. He could blackmail us for the rest of our lives. We'd better call the police, Gary said firmly. The police won't be able to protect you and Della, Maya argued. Oh, Maya, stop thinking about yourself for once, Della exploded, finally losing her patience. You're only worried about your parents finding out that you went on the overnight without a chaperone. You don't care what happens to the rest of us. Maya's mouth dropped open and her face turned as red as a tomato. Della immediately regretted blowing up at her friend. Now she'd be spending months apologizing to her. And what had she accomplished by yelling like that? Nothing at all. She wasn't going to change Maya. That's not true, Maya protested. I just, I just, okay, I won't say another word. She crossed her arms defiantly in front of her and glared furiously at Della. But Maya's right, Pete said suddenly, looking at Della. What are the police going to do to protect you, to protect any of us from this creep? Nothing. Are they going to put a full-time guard around your house, or escort you to school and back? No way. With our help, the police might be able to catch the partner, Della said. When? Ricky broke in. After we're all murdered in our sleep? Stop it! Don't say that! Maya screamed. Please, we're all getting hysterical, Suki said. We've got to chill out. So far, all the guy has done is... She stopped when she heard the knock on the front door. They all froze. Maya let out a little cry and sank deep into the armchair. Della looked to the front door as if waiting for someone to come bursting in. I, I left the camera on the stairway, Gary said in a loud whisper. I'm not going to answer it, Della whispered. I don't think we should answer it. No one agreed or disagreed. They were all staring toward the front hallway in frightened silence. Another knock, this time longer and louder. Why is he doing this? Maya cried. Come on, let's answer it, Gary said, moving toward the door. There won't be anyone there anyway. No, Gary, Della started, but he had made up his mind. He jogged to the front entrance, hesitated for a second, then put his face close to the door and yelled, Who is it? There was a brief silence, and then a man on the other side of the door said, We're back. <laughs>